This week on the Weekly Wheel of Time news, we have a potential Season 2 release date, a potential major casting, a really cool augmented reality feature to talk about that lets you interact with the Wheel of Time, and a commentary from the composer of the Wheel of Time that sheds some light on how the music was written for the show. Join me today as we tackle all of these subjects and more in the first Weekly Wheel of Time news of 2022. Now before diving into the topics, let's throw up a spoiler warning for the video. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of green. There will be no major spoilers, so feel free to watch this video, whether you've read the books or seen the show or not. So let's go ahead and kick things off with a video that was released on the Sony Soundtracks YouTube channel. I'll have the link in the description of this video. The video is a commentary from Wheel of Time Season 1 and Season 2 composer Lauren Balth and he explains some of the music from episode one of The Wheel of Time. Now, quick refresher if you are not sure who Lauren Balfe is. He is obviously the composer for The Wheel of Time's first season. He'll be back for the second season. He's a Scottish composer that has been the protege of Hans Zimmer for a while, and he individually has quite a discography and background with scoring both really good TV shows and really good movies. With The Wheel of Time, he took a very different approach to the score than other fantasy properties, he added vocals. It's sung entirely in the old tongue from Wheel of Time lore. During his commentary, he primarily focuses on the events on the last half of episode one and the music that accompanies it. What was really fun to me about listening to his commentary is hearing the level of detail and thought that goes into each scene when it comes to the music. What I actually like a lot about the score of the Wheel of Time is how different it sounds to everything else. It feels very distinct, and it doesn't sound like a clone of anything I can think of. I would love to see more of these breakdowns and commentaries on the score from Lorne, and it's always something that I pay attention to when I watch TV shows and movies, so please do more of those. Again, you can check that out in the link in the description of the video. Go watch that. Amazon just released a really cool interactive experience for both iOS and Android devices that allows you to interact with an augmented reality interface in the world of the Wheel of Time. Basically, once you set up your phone, you'll be able to see Trollocs in your basement, Fades in your bedroom, and even walk around inside Shadar Logoth. I thought it was really awesome and I had a ton of fun messing around with it. I wish you could use it with the front camera on your phone so you could take selfies with a Trolloc easily, but I just got a friend to help and now I have my very own Trolloc selfie. Now it's kind of crazy this type of technology is taking off and this is really very much the beginning of that. With the focus on the metaverse and Facebook, Apple, and Amazon, get used to these types of interactive content and eventually I think games along the same line. Ready Player One, here we come. Now what is unfortunate about this though is that there are many countries right now where you cannot download the Amazon AR app. Some countries allow Apple but not Android and vice versa. I'll have a link in the description of the video so you can check out to see if you can download it. Hopefully you can. I had a lot of fun playing with it. Go check that out if you can. Now in season two news, it appears that filming has started again in Prague. Many of the stars of the show have posted pictures saying that they were back in Prague for the completion of filming on season two. Now Prague is of course home to Jordan Studios, the large studio that was built specifically for the Wheel of Time. That complex is massive. It has tons of indoor sound stages. It has a props department, a blacksmith, offices for the writers and showrunners, and a lot more. Now, what they are back actually filming, we're not sure about because we don't really know much about the exact plot of the season. But we do have good reason to believe they are in block four of the filming, which means that they are filming the final episodes seven and eight of season two. Now, filming on the second season is expected to be completed by March, but who knows if they will stop then or if they'll finish earlier. There has been far less information leaking out about the production this time around, but rest assured we'll be on top of the Wheel of Time Season 2 news here. Now before moving on to some speculation though about Season 2 and its release date, let me quickly thank the video sponsor, Audible.com. Audible is the largest supplier of audiobooks in the world and they've been a supporter of the channel for a long, long time now. Audiobooks are a great way to read while you're on the move, and I not only listen to the Wheel of Time audiobooks regularly, I also listen to a lot of self-development and business-related books as well. I'm currently listening to Multipliers by Liz Wiseman, and I highly recommend that to all of you. If you have never tried Audible or audiobooks before, now is a great time to give them a try. Audible is giving my viewers a free audiobook of their choice, and you can keep it regardless of whether you choose to subscribe to the service or not. Just head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash Nablus and get signed up. You not only get to check out the service at no risk, you also get to help the channel out in the process, but let's get back to the news. Speaking of season two news, 
we may have gotten an idea of the season two release date. Maybe. Priyanka Bose, the actress that plays Alana Mosvani in the Wheel of Time television adaptation, was doing a live stream on her Instagram and talking about the Wheel of Time filming. And very off the cuff, she just mentions when they're going to release the show. Let me go ahead and play that clip right now. I can't tell you when season two is coming. I feel like you you guys should watch season one again. <laughs> season two should be coming in mid um this year you know there's a lot of work that gets put in um yeah so there's a lot of work guys so you heard it here season two comes out mid 2022 she's right right well probably not this is likely Priyanka misspeaking or meaning the end of 2022. It is not likely that the show is going to be released mid-2022 for a number of reasons. First of all, that would be summer in the U.S., and the boys will be releasing around that time already. So it is very unlikely that Amazon is going to be releasing two of their flagship properties to compete with each other. Second of all, it's not likely Priyanka would know the answer to this anyway. With the exception of maybe Rosamond, who's a producer on the series, none of the actors are likely to know release dates, and probably not Rosamond either. At this point, I don't even believe Rafe knows for sure the answer to that question, especially with the pandemic still going on. They likely have a target date from Amazon for a release, but I don't expect them to announce those dates for a while now, especially not before principal filming is complete. I don't think they need or want a repeat of last year with all the stoppages caused by the pandemic, stoppages to production, losing actors and actresses, and then being locked into a release date. Things can happen, and I don't think they're going to put themselves in that corner yet. When I was in London at the premiere, we were talking with Rafe, and season two's release date came up, and he essentially said that he always answers that question by saying 12 to 24 months as a time frame because he doesn't know, and he'd rather say a long time. I think based on that conversation, that Amazon would like season two to debut as close to season one as possible, but at this point, with production unfinished, I don't think it's set yet. If I had to guess at the release date, and keep in mind this is very much a guess, I would say basically November of 2022, right after The Lord of the Rings is off the air on Amazon, or they could do it sometime in early 2023. I would be fine with a delay if it meant that we're going to get a much higher quality post-production on the show, but I would imagine that the show is going to come out sometime around the same time it did this year, or last year, or 2021. There we go. So this nugget of news is not related to season two at all. At least I don't believe it is, but it could play a big role in the future of The Wheel of Time. For a while now, fans of The Wheel of Time have been fan casting various roles within the series. This has been going on in my Discord from day one. This discussion was happening online, especially in the very active Twitter of Time community, and a very specific actress who is very famous currently because of a role in Amazon's Expanse sci fi TV show. Of course, I'm talking about Shora Agdashlu who is repeatedly tagged by fans to play Cad Swain in the TV show. Now, about a month back, she took notice of this and tweeted out the following, acknowledging that everybody wanted her to play Cad Swain. This tweet is currently pinned on her Twitter as well. It's at the top of her feed, and that may have some more significance. We'll talk about that in a second. Rafe replied to her tweet saying that he wanted her to play everyone, and to come join them in Prague. It started a chain of messages on Twitter between the two of them that eventually moved to DMs on Twitter between the two of them, and then radio silence since. But again, that tweet is pinned to the top of her page, and The Expanse just ended its run, freeing her up. Now, whether this was just a stunt and she was already cast, or if this really actually happened the way it played out, this is very promising that she may indeed be cast as Cad Swain on the show. Now, without getting into major spoilers, Cad Swain is an older, very powerful Aes Sedai that plays a major role in the latter half of the series. But she could make an appearance, I would think, as early as season three. Now, Shora Agdashlu would be incredible in the role, and from the moment I saw her in The Expanse, I think I was one of many who agreed that she would be absolutely perfect for the part. If you have not seen her yet, go check out The Expanse and get a feel for her acting style and demeanor, and I think you'll see it too. Now, let's move on to some community news, starting with a Twitter user named Camille, who goes by the tag Rational Nerd, has been putting together some really cool infographics on the screen time for each character by episode, and then overall for season one. There are all kinds of really cool stats they've compiled about the season, but the one that I thought was really interesting was the total screen time for each character. My general thought was that Rand received less time than Egwene, which I found out 
was not accurate. Overall, Moraine had the most screen time, just barely beating out Rand, who came in about nine minutes less than her over the course of the season. So Rand came in number two. Egwene followed behind Rand about 20 fewer minutes than him and then Lan after that. Now this was completely against the way it felt to me as I watched it, which always means that your feelings can be misleading. This is one of the many stats that Rational Nerd has compiled. I highly suggest you check their, out their Twitter handle and the links to all those stats. It's a fascinating thing to check out. Go do that. Linked in the description below. So I mentioned this about two weeks ago, but I wanted to let everybody know again that we are revamping thegreatblight.com and putting a huge effort into finishing out the wiki that lives on the site with all the maps and other write-ups. It's a monumental undertaking, and I am also hiring some staff writers to write the Wheel of Time book and TV show themed articles for the main page of the site. If you are interested in either of those tasks, writing wiki articles or being a staff writer, or if you are a very good social media mind, you can head to www.thegreatblight.com to check out the article describing the various roles and how you can apply. I've reached out to a few of the candidates already, and I will be reaching out to more this week. And lastly, I want to bring back our weekly contest for the weekly Wheel of Time news. This week, I'm going to be giving away a Tarvalon Harbor Master t-shirt to one lucky winner. Here's what you have to do to enter. First of all, you must be subscribed to the channel, and you must like this video. Those two are a must. Then I want you to comment on this video with an idea for a Wheel of Time lore video that you'd like me to make. Again, very simple. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and then comment on the video about a lore topic that you want me to cover. I'll pick a winner and I'll announce it on the next week's weekly Wheel of Time news show. So thanks for watching everybody. Massive thank you to my patrons who you can see up on the screen right now. Special thanks to my newest Supreme Council patron, Jeffrey Schull. Patreon is the best way you can support the channel, and I am unbelievably thankful to my patrons for supporting this channel. You can become a patron by clicking on the link in the description of the video. Also, check out one of these videos here that you might like. I've got tons of other videos up about the Wheel of Time. I hope you will enjoy all of them. Thank you to everybody for watching, and until next time, peace out.